Okay, so I think we can all agree that we love our families and most times they have our best intentions in mind. But when it comes to things like holidays, get-togethers, any celebration involving food, things can get awkward real quick. Aside from having to constantly justify or explain the food we put in our mouth, no, really, beans are a great source of protein. They just don't get it. Somehow, when they hear the words plant-based or vegan, they automatically assume that you eat like a rabbit. So this Thanksgiving, I'm gonna help you shock them and shut them up. You're welcome. By giving you an easy recipe that is sure to be a crowd pleaser at Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm gonna even argue that it will especially impress your non-vegan friends and family. Let me know. And to all my fellow Canadians, I know this is super last minute, but you can take comfort in knowing that you are not alone. I totally thought Thanksgiving was two weeks away still, so I'm in the exact same boat, super last minute. But that's okay, this recipe is super easy to whip up, and honestly, it's exactly what I'm bringing to my Thanksgiving dinner, and it can be what you're bringing too. So let's go check it out. Okay guys, so for the sweet baked beans dish, we are going to be using one can of black beans, one can of red kidney beans, and two cans of white kidney beans, and two cans of baked beans in tomato sauce. I just wanna point out that my husband grabbed the wrong can, so the one on the top has no oil, and the one on the bottom actually has oil in it. I'll always have to be paying attention to those ingredients. So for this recipe, I'll just be using the top one, but for you guys, you need two cans. We will also be using three peppers. Any colors will do, but the prettier the colors, the better for this recipe. Two apples, one medium onion, and four stalks of celery. And for our oil-free dressing, we'll be using one cup of ketchup, one cup of maple syrup, and one tablespoon of honey Dijon mustard. For anyone watching their sugar intake, feel free to cut the maple syrup down to half of a cup. Keep in mind that this recipe yields a pretty big batch of beans, so it's not actually overwhelmingly sweet per individual serving. Okay, so I've went ahead and chopped up all my peppers, onions, celery, and apples into bite-sized pieces. As you can see, I chopped them all relatively about the same size. Okay, so we're going to start by water sautéing our onions first. I do this by just adding a little bit of water to the bottom of the pot. I let them simmer on high heat for about five or six minutes before adding the other stuff. Next, we're gonna throw in our peppers and then our celery and give everything a good mix. Notice that I didn't throw the apples in at this point. I like to wait until the end to throw the apples just to keep them a little bit on the crunchy and sweet side. Once all your veggies are in the pot, you might need to add a little bit more water to continue to water saute everything. I usually let the veggies cook for maybe another seven or eight minutes until they're soft, but not too soft. And if you're someone who likes an extra crunch, then don't even cook them that long. Honestly, maybe even an extra five minutes or so will do. Keep in mind that this bean dish will still be going in the oven, so all the veggies and beans will be cooking even more. With that being said, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now it's time to throw in the apples once your veggies have reached your desired texture. I usually let these water saute for only about two or three minutes and I find that that's perfect. After that, take them off the heat and we're ready to add the beans and the sauce. There's no particular order that I put the beans in, I just make sure that they're all rinsed off really well. So the original beans in tomato sauce is the can with no oil. You do not rinse these ones off, just dump them directly in the mix. And remember, normally I would be using two cans, but for this time it's just going to be the one. I usually give everything a really good mix just before adding the sauce. Just look how beautiful this is. Look at all the colors. It makes such a beautiful dish. Okay, so it's time to add the sauce now. We're going to start by adding one cup of ketchup and then our one cup of maple syrup. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. You can use honey Dijon or regular Dijon, it really doesn't matter. And as you can see, I just eyeballed it, but you can measure out one tablespoon if you like. 
So now you just want to give everything a really good mix and make sure you get all those beans covered equally in the sauce. Then you want to transfer it into a large casserole type baking dish. I think I'm using a 9 by 12 pan here. You can even divide this into two smaller baking dishes, which I've done that before too. So you just want to make sure that the beans are completely even and once again that the sauce is covering everything. And then lastly, you want to cover it completely in aluminum foil. Make sure that it's nice and tight around all the edges. So again, we're going to bake this at 350 degrees for about one and a half hours. If you prefer to have it a little bit on the saucier side, then take it out after an hour. It's all done. And guys, seriously, this is so good. I'm not even a huge bean eater, but even I love this dish. My kids love it. Everybody loves it. It is so, so good. Seriously guys, give this one a try. It makes such a big batch. Everybody loves it, keeps really well in the fridge, and it can also be eaten hot or cold. So the leftovers make for a great on-the-go lunch. I also find it delicious on top of air-fried french fries, on top of my baked potatoes. So seriously, lots of yummy options with this recipe. If you are new here and you'd like to follow along my weight loss journey, get all my starch solution what I eat in a day videos, my recipes, and of course my progress updates, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I know 2020 has been like something out of a movie, but there is still so much to be grateful for. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.